well, most of my work now um, involves um, remedial things as far as uh, vibrato is concerned. Um, and usually um, it stems from a person either not being able to start the vibrato immediately, if need be. Sometimes it has to do with, and actually very often it has to do with not being able to decide which muscles drive the vibrato and how the motion of the vibrato in the arm interacts with the, with the hand and the fingers and so forth. And the most common um, things that we have to combat are, first of all, uh, too much pressure against the string, which makes the, the fingers rigid. And that comes from either simply too much pressure or usually counter pressure from the thumb. And when there's a lot of counter pressure from the thumb, that usually results in a, a rotary motion around the thumb. And some teachers actually, at the beginning, teach a rocking motion of the forearm, which is, uh, I, th I feel, a, a distinct mistake. Um, <clears throat> that involves a, a complex interaction between the muscles at the base of the forearm and the muscles at the lower base of the, of the upper arm. So that the bicep, tricep, abductors, and adductors are all involved in doing this motion, which unfortunately also, to some extent, in the forearm, controls the motion of the fingers. Okay, so were I teaching a beginner vibrato, there are s several things that I would be really sure happened first. Um, one is that they um, are playing in close position in the lower positions, lower extended, upper extended, and that they're playing in second, third, and fourth positions, and that we study very much the, the gesture of, of the shift. Because the gesture of preparing the shift and, and uh, casting the shift um, integrate with what eventually will be an easy vibrato motion. And um, so, for things like that, there are, there are old, um, there are shifting exercises of all kinds that, that people can do, many things available. Uh, there are um, methods in second, third, and fourth position. I can't remember any right, right now, maybe Whistler, Rubank. Um, so that a person is going up and down and across so that there's just generally a mobility in the upper arm and the forearm and so that there is a sense of casting or th throwing shifts. Um, at that point, um, with a kid, I would be having a, a bit of a game or a race and we would definitely shift between F and B flat. We would simply go back and forth trying to throw a dart to the top and trying to be accurate both at the bottom and the top. Um, and with the kid, we'd start slowly and then we would, week by week, begin to push it so it goes faster and faster and faster. Um, and uh, since I'm old, the, the kids are going to have faster reflexes than I do, but uh, since I'm fairly efficient, I can usually go faster than they can for quite some time. Anyway, so we start with this, and then the purpose of that is, um, is that it exercises all of the gestures of the vibrato for virtually anywhere on the cello in series. In the lower part of the uh, fingerboard, the vibrato is driven from the delt front of the deltoid muscle. In the middle, it's still driven from the deltoid muscle, but the forearm begins to follow through, to open up. In the upper positions, it's isolated <coughs> in the forearm. So, the next thing after the shifting of the, uh, 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 from F to B flat is taking probably a second finger, and I use the second finger because it's the um, generally the center of balance on the on the, in the hand, 
and the alignment of the second finger usually determines the alignment of the rest of the hand and the alignment with the second finger through the hand and through the wrist and through the forearm determines a kind of a unity uh, between the hand and, and the forearm. At this point, say starting on A, you will hold step. Hold step uh, slides that are very liquid so that not, they don't have a jerk. Very liquid. And we practice again being extremely accurate on both the top and the bottom. And sometimes I'll guide a, a person's arm. Um, I'll do the work. I'll try to get them to relax. I'll support the elbow and control the forearm just so we get a, a kind of a light, easy, smooth action. And so that they realize that vigor or vivacious motion is not necessarily a byproduct of high, high level force. Because usually people uh, uh, somehow relate uh, fast motions with uh, set muscles, which is not true. Okay, not efficient. So we do this, and we'll do it several places, several places on the instrument, in the lower four positions to begin with. Then, the second finger again, accurate half step, and we try to do it so it's fairly quick, and we try to do it uh, not with a, a, a well-centered sound and with as little pressure on the string as, or with the left hand as possible. And we do that at several places on the instrument as well. Uh, then, at, at, at some risk of um, um, damage to uh, roommates or uh, parents, a combination of shifting and, uh, and this little slide. Um, from that point on, it becomes a matter of uh, not necessarily talking about it to any great extent, but the fact that when you shift from a lower position or a lower finger to a higher position or a higher finger, it usually rebounds off the, off the low side of the vibrato and moves toward the high side of the vibrato. Uh, and this is integrated with the, with the shifting motion. So we'll start, perhaps, by starting with a dead tone and going to a, a vibrato sound. So that we first have the preparation and then the landing. The reason for trying to master at least the idea of the shift and the preparation for the shift in relation to vibrato is that people normally will just throw their forearm this way and when they do they have to stop it with the bicep and, and other things and that freezes the hand at the at the top so there's no uh, no supple quality at all and you just can't move and so we go to a vibrato and then start with a and do both so that there's a very liquid shift well prepared let very little pressure against the string. Uh, both of the vibratos are probably just a trifle wobbly, but for the time being that's perfectly okay. Then we'll go from one finger, one finger to the next in the same way, and then one finger to the next in the same way. So we'll go from one to two. Then we reverse the process and go 